All right, so this is Messier 108, which is actually in the plow constellation or the Big Dipper if you're in the US. So if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and you have dark skies, you should be able to see this year round. So, you know, crack out the telescope and see if you can spot it. You know, what, ex what more excuse do you need? This is Messier 108 as seen last night from my back garden. Oh, you, you're telling me that's not a Hubble image? <laughs> No. Did you have to go outside in the cold or? Uh, briefly, but then I left the telescope to it and sat in the warm, watching telly and checking on my phone to make sure it was doing what it was supposed to be doing. It actually goes almost directly overhead in my back garden, which is just as well this time of year because the trees have been growing kind of over. So actually the bit the strip of sky I can look at is getting smaller and smaller, but uh, happily Messier 108 is one of the things that lies in there. It's often called the surfboard galaxy because we're seeing it edge on, right? We're not seeing it face on so we can see all that spiral structure. We're seeing it as it's tilted to us around about 75 degrees. So it's got that very classic surfboard shape. I feel like the surfboard galaxy, we should make some sort of Beach Boys reference. Like, I don't know, like, if everybody had a telescope <laughs> across the USA, they'd be observing the surfboard. <laughs> like Charles Messier. <laughs> It fits! <laughs> it's so well! I can't for the life of me see why anyone would think this was a barred galaxy, but uh, that's, what it, that's what it's classified as. It becomes a little clearer. I also have an infrared image of it for you. So this is from the 2 micron all sky survey. It's maybe a little clearer here. You can see there really is kind of a disc in the middle here. And perhaps you can convince yourself that there's a bar in the centre and there are spiral arms coming off it. I'm not entirely, again, not entirely clear. It's clearly quite a messy looking galaxy. It's a lot easier to see, actually, in this Hubble Space Telescope image of the galaxy. And it might also give you some idea of the scale and the fact that it just doesn't fit on the Hubble CCD. And you can really see those dark dust bands there. And essentially what they do is block visible light. It's essentially hiding what's behind that in the galaxy from that region. So it makes knowing a lot about M108 quite difficult because of this dust. You have to do a lot of corrections for how you think the light has been absorbed and re-radiated and all of that kind of stuff. We have a paper here, which is called Chandra Observations. So Chandra is an X-ray satellite. Chandra Observations of the Edgeon Galaxy NGC 3556, which they conveniently tell you is also Messier 108. Violent galactic disk halo interaction revealed. Violent? Violent, yes. So here's what the Chandra view of this galaxy is. So the line here is kind of the optical, where the optical galaxy is. So what we were looking at before is just giving the outline of the galaxy. And then the contours are where they've been detecting X-rays. And so you can see there are a bunch of little dots here, which are kind of point sources, of which the most interesting ones are probably this guy here, which is the one that's closest to the center. And they think that's probably the supermassive black hole that really is at the center. The reason it's not exactly coincident with the center is probably because this galaxy is sort of so, so messy that it's actually hard to define exactly where the center is. And actually there is this this sort of diffuse stuff that seems to be associated with it and they suggest that this is actually the violent processes going on around this supermassive black hole are actually throwing material out which is interacting violently with the stuff around to create this kind of cone of emission. But then you've got this source here, 26. It was the brightest source that they found. The brightest, but not necessarily the highest energy. So suggesting there's obviously something going on there, but not necessarily from the biggest of black holes. So one of the reasons that I think Messier 108 is dead interesting is well, because I am a researcher that does research on supermassive black holes, um, is that it contains a candidate for what's known as an intermediate mass black hole, which is sort of like the missing link in black hole studies. So an intermediate mass black hole is a black hole that has a mass of anywhere from hundreds to hundreds of thousands of times the mass of the sun. And they sit between the stellar mass black holes and the supermassive black holes. So if this is massive black hole down here, and this is like, you know, frequency or the number of it, we've got the stellar mass black holes, you know, down here. I don't think that's what the distribution looks like, but you get the idea. And then we've got the, you know, the distribution of supermassive black holes up here. It's sort of like uh, a million, so 10 to the six and like 10 to the nine, everything like that. Whereas down here, you've got, you know, tens and <laughs> here you've got hundreds, right? So these are the intermediate ones in here, intermediate mass black holes, IMBH as we call them. And what we found is we found things at the tail end of both of these distributions, right? So for example, we found dwarf galaxies that have supermassive black holes that look like they're just under a million times the mass of the sun. But we've also found things here as well, where we've had um, two black holes that have merged together, for example. 
But we've also found things like down at the top end of the cell mass black hole distribution as well. So for example, the gravitational wave signal, GW190521, which was detected by the LIGO observatory, right, that detects all these gravitational waves. And that was thought to be a merger of two black holes, 85 and 65 times the mass of the sun. So they were probably created in supernova, but when they merged together, some of the energy was radiated away as gravitational waves and they left behind a black hole that was 142 times the mass of the sun. Technically, an intermediate mass black hole, right? But it's it's on the fringes. Really what you'd want to do is find something that's like right back smang in the middle, back smang, smack bang <laughs> in the middle of those two distributions that's around about, you know, like a thousand times the mass of the sun or tens of thousands of times the mass of the sun. So that's what we think might be in Messier 108, a candidate intermediate mass black hole that falls smack bang in the middle of that sort of empty bit of parameter space where we don't have any of these intermediate mass black holes. And from the luminosity, you can get at the mass of the black hole that might be giving it off. It's a little bit woolly and they didn't do it in the paper either. This was me sort of being like, oh, look, this correlation that we've seen between X-ray brightness and black hole mass, right? You can kind of sort of extrapolate the correlation down and find that it's roughly between a thousand to 10,000 times the mass of the sun black hole that could be giving off this x-ray, which would put it in the middle here, right? In between stellar mass and supermassive black holes. So it's really cool that we have that candidate in Messier 108, but we still don't know what the mass actually is yet. And even if it was an intermediate mass black hole, we still don't know how it would grow that big either, whether it would be through mergers of black holes, whether it would be through this accretion process where they take in matter. To find that out, we're gonna have to find more intermediate mass black holes. Here, instead of seeing the point sources, I mean, you can still see a few of the point sources, but mostly what you see is this kind of diffuse X-ray emission. This is hot gas, and this is the violent process that was being referred to in the title of that paper, because this is gas that's kind of associated with the galaxy. And what we think is happening here is you've got a disk of stars. In some places within the galaxy, you have kind of bursts of star formation going on. Shortly after, at least in sort of stellar terms, the most massive stars will blow up a supernovae and inject large amounts of energy. Typically, that energy will kind of get shot out of the plane of the galaxies, and that will heat the gas that's sort of lurking around the galaxy. And it's thought that what you're seeing here is that kind of gas which is being heated. You can even see, and the claim is that some of these features that kind of stick up, like that one there or that one down there, aren't just sort of spurious noise features. They're real things where you've kind of got a fountain of material that's been shot out. So you have a load of stars forming. Some of them blow up a supernovae that kind of blows gas out into the, the halo of the galaxy, creates these very hot plumes of gas. And that's what you're seeing there. That's this kind of violent feedback process from what's going on in the disk of the galaxy. It's a relatively nearby galaxy, so actually it's easier to spot this phenomenon. You know, th these X-rays are quite faint, so actually the phenomenon could well be going on in other galaxies, and it's just harder to see because they're further away. But it's also clearly that a, a galaxy that there are lots of kind of messy processes going on because it's a very untidy-looking galaxy, and wherever you have kind of those sort of turbulent processes, you tend to get quite a lot of star formation happening. So it's probably forming stars quite rapidly too. Nice, cool. So there is. You got more? We're done. No. All right. That's it. Messier 108. You're done. The whole Messier catalogue. Finished. Hello, everyone. The publication of this video actually means we've now covered all 110 objects in the Messier catalogue. If you'd like to go back and watch the videos, we've got a special playlist of them all in order. There'll be links on the screen and in the video description. Please do stay subscribed to the channel. We've got more plans, more videos coming. Watch this space. Get it? Watch this space? Yeah?